HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, DPW Director John Westerling gives an update on snow removal. Middle School Assistant Principal Mary Ellen Grady talks about her training for the Boston Marathon. The Hopkinton Competitive Cheer Team is hosting an event to raise money for Nationals and the Hillers won a couple titles in postseason play. But first, here is what's happening in Hopkinton. After 34 years in business, the Golden Spoon, located at 85 West Main Street, will have their last day Sunday, March 1st. A Starbucks, Unibank, and stores have been proposed for the area. The existing structure will be demolished to make more room for roadways. Part owner of Colella's supermarket at 61 Main Street, Dale Danahy, reportedly announced that despite the grocery store portion closing soon, the liquor store portion will remain open. The supermarket will be closing in the near future. The date has not yet been announced. No date has been determined to how long the liquor store will stay open after the grocery store portion closes or what the future of the property is. The grocery portion is expected to close within the next few weeks. Town officials from Ashland and Hopkinton held public meetings in both towns to get public input on a possible merger between the fire departments. The merger would essentially create one big fire department for both Hopkinton and Ashland. HCAM News will continue to update you on the plan as it moves forward. Tuesday, March 3rd at 7 p.m. is the special town meeting at the Hopkinton Middle School Auditorium to discuss if the town should purchase land at 203 Pond Street. The special town election will be Tuesday, March 10th. The special town meeting will air live on HCAM. In the month of February, we have seen a blizzard, two massive snowstorms dropping nearly a foot of snow, and four straight weekends with a significant snowstorm. The snow has caused mayhem in the Boston area and repeatedly closed schools and businesses across the state. DPW or roadway departments and cleanup crews have been working non-stop throughout New England over the last few weeks. Recently, DPW Director of Hopkinton, John Westerling, gave HCAM News an update on the current status of snow cleanup in Hopkinton. Tom, on a typical snowstorm where we have to go out and sand and plow, uh, we would have roughly 45 pieces of equipment out there at full complement. And that includes DPW vehicles with DPW drivers. It includes DPW vehicles with uh, temporary drivers that we hire. It also includes private contractors that we hire with their own plow equipment. And that ranges everything from one-ton pickups with a plow up to loaders with plows. So that's a typical plowing event during those snowstorms. Tonight we will have a full complement of equipment out to remove snow from the downtown area, from the Elmwood and Center schools, from the police department, the fire department, and then we'll, we'll move over to the high school and, and middle school and Hopkins school area. But tonight, for example, we will have seven loaders, 16 dump trucks, uh, two sidewalk snow blowers, and two one-ton plows out on the streets removing snow. We'll also have uh, one excavator at our snow dump, and what he does is as, as we load the snow from those various locations into the dump trucks and tractor trailer trucks, they will bring that snow down to our snow dump on Cedar Street, and we have an excavator which takes it and piles it and stacks it higher and higher. Town meeting last year appropriated $350,000 for snow and ice removal. And we exceeded that 
uh, and we went back to get approval from the town manager and the appropriations committee in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 31D of Mass General Laws, which allows us to overspend the appropriated budget. Where we are above that, I, I don't have those figures yet because we're still awaiting invoices from the plow contractors and our salt and suppliers. I would say that the difficult part has been the continuous effort that we've had to put out there. Just looking at some of our statistics here, we had a very low snowfall winter through January 26th, and then blizzard Juno hit and brought us 31 inches of snow. And 31 inches of snow typically takes us several days to plow, to widen the roads, widen intersections, clear snow from the sidewalks, from the center of town, from the school. So that's an, that's an ongoing process for several days. And then on February 15th, we were hit with another 16 inches of snow. So just as we were making headway with that blizzard Juno, we got another 16 inches of snow. And again, that just compounded our efforts. And we were doing fine. We were getting caught up. And then February 9th, uh, we got hit with another 16 inches of snow. So it, was, it just compounds the effort and uh, makes you go back to basically square one with your, your snow plowing, treating the roads, widening intersections, widening roads, removing snow. And as we got through that storm, we got another 18 inches on February 15th. So it's just been a one sustained effort from that 31 inches we got on January 27th. Hopkinton is blessed with a dedicated and committed crew at the Department of Public Works, the Highway, Water, and Sewer Departments. Those gentlemen have been working long hours um, and just dedicated to providing the best service that they can to the community, making the roads safe, making them navigable, and just doing the best they can for the community. Keeping up with all the snow is certainly no easy task. Last year, the Hopkinton Competitive Cheer Team took home a national championship in the Spirit Competition in Orlando, Florida. This year, they are looking to repeat that achievement. Vice President of the Cheer Boosters Club, Tom Shambo, talked to HKM News about an upcoming beer and wine tasting, which will help fund the team and their trip back to nationals. We have, we're hosting a beer and wine uh, gala for uh, the cheerleading, cheerleading team in Hopkinton for, uh, uh, to raise money uh, to try to send them to nationals down in Florida. You know, I've coached a number of sports in town, the youth sports program, and I'll tell you, I haven't seen anything like what the girls have to go through uh, quite often six days a week uh, for several hours, two, three hours at a time, and the uh, competitive nature of what it takes to do choreographed dance and gymnastics all at the same time, holding each other up, doing tumbling, um, etc. And uh, there's the fall event, as well as the winter event uh, that the teams go through to try to get a bid for nationals. So we, were, we had three goals in mind when we put the event together. One of them was to raise money to send the girls to Florida, as I mentioned before. Um, the second was to make it a community event so that the town could get together to support the hardworking girls of town. And what we're gonna do is we have um, distributors coming in and you'll be able to sample some higher end wines uh, to get a sense for what they're like, 12 reds, uh, six or seven white wines, and we're also gonna have uh, six to ten beers, specialty beers that uh, people will be able to learn about. The distributors will be talking about the different wines, give you the opportunity to ask some questions, to get better educated, if you will, about, um, uh, about some things that they might not normally get a chance to taste or, or use. And um, we're also going to have some food, uh, light snacking kind of food. It's from six o'clock to nine o'clock, so some appetizers. And we have a DJ, um, Carl Adams, who's gonna play at the event to keep the, the spirit up and the spirit light. So it's an opportunity to mingle with town folks in addition to raising some money for the girls. There have been numerous opportunities for the, for the girls over the years. Um, one of the ones that I'm particularly blown away by is this year in the fall, they won three Tri-Valley League or TVL championships in a row. That's the first time that's happened. 
Uh, they've competed in the regionals and come in second place. Last year, they competed um, in the New Englands and came in uh, third place in New England. It's the first time that that's ever happened where they've uh, placed that high. They have a number of first place events and uh, the team has really gone from mm, pretty much obscure 10 years ago to being a competitor and, and a top-notch player and, and uh, placement in pretty much all of the events they go to, both invitationals, which are independents, as well as uh, the school events. Community support is tremendous. Um, you know, without the town supporting them um, from a financial as well as uh, just, you know, being there to applaud and, 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 uh, and help them out. Um, but also from the coaches. The coaches have been tremendous. You know, you need to know how to drive the girls, uh, how far to drive the girls. It's very um, demanding on their bodies in addition to their minds. So, um, you know, bruises are quite common, sprains are, are, are the norm, and the coaches help them work through that along with the support you know, of the town. In addition to uh, music and some food and education about some wines that you, and beers that you might not normally get access to, we have some theme baskets. So uh, a Celtics basket, a Red Sox basket, a barbecue basket that uh, people who are going to the event who bought a ticket and are attending will be able to bid on. Uh, some of them are, are, you know, have some fun themes to them as well uh, inside. So there's an opportunity to, to bid on those and, uh, and win. And then if you're not able to make the event, buying a ticket, um, whether you go or you don't go, the ticket gets you the opportunity to be entered into a grand prize raffle where you're, the ticket will be pulled out of a, a basket and you win a, a Bose surround sound system. So I encourage you all to come on out, um, support the cheerleaders of Hopkinton um, and their quest for a national bid to send them down to Florida to get some education about some wines and beers that you might not normally get access to and to just have a general fun night in Hopkinton to get out of maybe all the snow that you've been shoveling the last couple of weeks. For more information about the event, check out our website, hcam.tv. A lot more coming up on HCAM News, including middle school assistant principal Mary Ellen Grady talking about her marathon training, a look at Hiller's sports as a couple. Hiller teams took home some prizes in the winter postseason, and Courtney will also have our HCAM Insider. HCAM News will be right back. Thanks to the HEF, HPTA, and 300th Anniversary Committee, we're bringing a program forward to honor alumni of Hopkinton High School. We're looking for nominations, and the criteria include graduated from the high school at least 10 years ago, demonstrated a high level of achievement, and made significant contributions to work, home, community, or volunteer efforts, and exhibited leadership, character, and service. Please visit our website to participate in nominating your HHS grad. Welcome back to HCAM News. The winter sports season has come and gone. In our latest sports report, the Hopkinton Lady Hillers basketball team and Hillers boys ice hockey team celebrated senior night before playing two very good games. The Hillers wrestling team also had some postseason success. Ryan Mastriani placed second in the divisionals for the 106-pound weight class. Ethan Puvaka finished fourth in the 113-pound weight class. Colin Shea fourth in the 120-pound weight class. Adam Coria third in the 126-pound. Sam Esfahani third in the 132-pound. Lucas Kaminsky second in the 138-pound. Daniel Murphy, fifth in the 145-pound. Zach Herlehai, first in the 152-pound. Chris Zarba, third in the 160-pound. Wyatt Beach, third in the 182-pound. Conrad Lavoy, first in the 220-pound. And Josh Sokol, first in the 285-pound. Hopkinton's Josh Sokol won the Division II state championship in the 285-pound weight class. The Hillers finished 14th overall in Division II. The Hopkinton Hiller JV hockey team won their second straight championship as they beat Hudson 2 0. Hudson gave the Hiller JV team their only loss earlier in the season. In girls hockey, Dover Sherborne Hopkinton came from behind to beat Mansfield Oliver Ames 5 3 in their final game of the season. The team finishes 4 13 1. Congratulations to the Hopkinton Hillers cheer team. They won their fourth consecutive TVL championship this past weekend over at Norton High School. 
The Hopkinton Hillers basketball team took on Medfield Wednesday, February 11th with a chance to clinch a postseason spot. Late in the second quarter, Jake Doherty doing what he likes to do, hitting threes and draws the foul, misses the free throw, and it was 32-27, Medfield leading at half. Third quarter, the Hillers fight back early. Ryan passes to Odell. Odell bobbles, regains control, and laces it through. Then on the following inbound, Mitch Nagel catches Medfield sleeping, gets the steal, misses the shot, rebuttal no good, but Pat Ryan takes care of business to put the Hillers up 39-37. Medfield leading late in the fourth quarter, 59-55. Matt Locke locks in and bangs a three from the top to make it a one-point game. The game would go into overtime, tied at 65. Unfortunately for Medfield, Matt Locke stayed locked in, nails this three to make it 68-66 Hopkinton. Then following possession, Pat Ryan with the steal, takes it coast to coast and off the boards. Hiller's up 70-66. Hopkinton never looks back and takes the victory 77-72. Matt Locke put up 21 points in the win. And the Hillers are in the playoffs as they get their 10th win of the year against Medfield. On February 13th, Norton beat Hopkinton 56-35. And then in the last game of the regular season, the Hillers defeated Medway 69-57 to finish 11-9. The Hopkinton Hillers clinch the fifth seed in the Division II Central bracket. Stay tuned to HCAM News as well as our website HCAM.TV and also our Facebook and Twitter pages as we will give constant updates on Hiller Sports as we enter playoff time. Hopkinton Middle School Assistant Principal Mary Ellen Grady recently announced that she is running the Boston Marathon to benefit the Sky's the Limit project. The project aims to provide funding towards making the courtyard at Hopkinton Middle School an accessible and useful area for teachers and students. In the second part of our interview, she discusses her training during what has been a very snowy month. I started training, I would say seriously, probably in October. Um, I've been running and just trying to increase my mileage. So my usual run would be I'd go after school and there's a Milford Trail, the, the running trail that goes from almost the Hopkinton line and it goes um, quite a ways in Milford so I would run first a back and forth one particular level was three miles and another one was five miles and from my house it was seven miles and if I run to the end it's ten miles so I was I would do that after school alternating between three five six you know and ten miles um, and just go after school and then go on the weekends now we had all this snow and it's killing me because my, that is a beautiful place to go. It's first of all, it's, it's, it's gorgeous. So you, you see the trees, you're out um, in the open and you don't have to worry about cars and I can just get in my zone and listen to my music and sing at the top of my lungs and um, nobody bothers you and nobody cares. And when, you know, now I'm back to trying the streets. So I tried the streets and the snow is so high, it's over my head and um, although I'm not petite, people still don't see you and I don't see them because of the snow banks. And the, the roads I run in Milford are, are closer so you get, you know, you stop. Um, I live in the downtown area so there's, you run a few feet and there's another stop you have to stop and look and that it's hard. And I, so I um, invested in these, they called, I think, yak tracks or something that you put on the bottom of your sneakers so I won't slip on the black ice. I have those. I have crazy um, things that I have this hood that goes over me. I look kind of like a mass murderer. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> but I have a hot pink jacket or a, or, or a purple jacket, so um, that kind of softens that look. Um, but um, so I, I was looking for places to, to run, and I discovered the, the place that they plow consistently are cemeteries. So I've been doing a lot of running in the cemetery, and as I tell people, people are dying to get in there, but nobody bothers you. Um, so I started running in the cemeteries, and then um, I, rec I ran indoor in the school around when it was you know too snowy or too icy or whatever. And now my place to go is the Brown Gym before school and where the seventh graders are held up. So I get here about six when the school opens and I run until school starts. The first two marathons I did, I trained and I, m my dad would 
drop me off at the Hopkinton line and take my son and do errands and I would run the entire you know route or I'd go through Natica Wellesley on my way and he'd pick me up and he'd you know stop and say how you doing and I'm saying I need to get in I'm really tired dad and he'd say you got one more mile see you later and he'd pull off and um, that's how I kind of get got better um, but it's it's really hard to get out on the road right now I've, I've driven it to see if I could do it and I'm I'm just really nervous I'm that much older and that you know thinking all I need is to fall once and that's the end of it or get hit by a car or whatever so I'm looking for places everywhere I've been to the high school track next door the indoor track and that's usually busy so it's hard to find any amount of good solid time to run so I am improvising and I'm uh, trying to be resilient and just keep finding a new place and you know it may be a lot of indoor training this this year instead of getting outdoors like I would prefer. A lot is coming up on the HKM channels, including a special town meeting on Tuesday, March 3rd, regarding the land at 203 Pond Street. To tell you more about what is coming up on the HKM channels, here is our promotions coordinator, Courtney, with our HKM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HKM Insider. Tonight at 8 p.m., the Hopkinton Coffee Break hosts are joined by Jen Belisi and Chris Liardi from Golden Pond. There's a lot of a lot of employees that have been there for years and years, mm -hmm. you know, uh, over 10 years, a lot of them. And then there's a new group coming in to kind of support all the new changes. So cool. it's been kind of fun. On Monday, March 2nd at 7 p.m., Claire Willis gives a presentation on living a full life in Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. What you pay attention to and what you rest your mind on is the primary shaper of your brain and how you experience your life. At 8.30 p.m., learn how vaccines prevent diseases and why they are important to our overall health in Physician Focus. People don't realize that several of our vaccines uh, prevent cancer. People are very terrified of cancer. That's something much more real than chickenpox or measles. On Tuesday, March 3rd at 7 p.m., the special town meeting for 203 Pond Street will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, March 4th at 11.30 a.m., learn about the care you can give your loved one if they have Alzheimer's or dementia. At 1 p.m., learn about Middle Eastern music and dance. On Thursday, March 5th at 7 p.m., the school committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And on HCAM Ed, the Hopkinton School Safety Task Force holds a forum on the ALICE program and how it will be implemented in Hopkinton schools. Would you like to have the HCAM Insider newsletter delivered to you every week? If so, just send me an email at Courtney at HCAM.TV. Also, please pass it along to a friend and help us grow. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Be sure to check our website, hcam.tv, or find us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton, including upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and go Hillers. Open door.